Shut up and sit down. Thank you for joining us again as we endeavor to encourage leaders in motivating millennials toward a deeper assimilation into the business workforce. In our last episode, I stated that millennials are more normal, more emotional, and more reflective than most business owners may think. I suggested that there were several characteristics that make millennials so special. I believe they're inclusive, generous, idealistic, and decisive. As we were wrapping up, we began a discussion on how you, the business owner, the sales coach, the general manager, the owner, can help millennials with their transition into your workforce. And we began by addressing what you can do specifically. And we stated that you can lead A, from a position of rationale over rules. People respond better to rationale, logic over law, common sense over command. If you can do that, you'll have a much better chance of having your next millennial be the true game changer in your business. A second way you can help millennials is this. You can lead from a position of transparency over tyranny. Team, from the bottom of my heart, we may be the leaders of right now, but they are the leaders of the future, and I'm not afraid of that. I'm not afraid of millennials. I embrace them like you. They challenge me to reconnect with the way I used to think and act when I was an idealist, back when I was younger, back when I knew everything. I love aligning myself with their vision and their spirit, but they don't always see me as I see them. Maybe it's the age difference or the fact that I have a strong personality that comes through with strong passion. I'm not going to apologize for that, but I have made some adjustment for it. And it begins with being transparent. Interestingly, even the way we define transparent can help to muddy the waters related to communicating from my seat to the seat of the millennial. From hundreds of conversations with millennials on this subject, let me say this. They don't care what you mean by the word transparency. Here's what they think being transparent means. They're looking for a leader who admits to failure. Now, it's easy to talk about achievements, but being frank about failures helps millennials understand the reality of the journey that is life and career. If a business owner creates a culture where everyone feels comfortable admitting mistakes, fears, and failures, then I guarantee the average millennial will be more inclined to respond. Not to the words being spoken necessarily, but to the works of an honest, clear, and transparent leader. That's what comes to their mind. So, the days of dictator are dead and gone. They've been dead for a while, by the way. They've been replaced with the need for more clarity and transparency. If you survey the workplace, besides the need for job security and career advancement, the third most important thing on the list for every millennial in any company is that it delivers truth to its workforce. They want to know where the company's going and how it plans to get there. In other words, they just want transparency so they can plan to protect themselves. This young workforce has figured out that if they don't look out for themselves, the mother company is not going to do that for them. Now having a boss, a leader, an owner who's honest about the future, about feeling, about fear, goes a long way toward endearing the worker toward the workplace. Businesses pay a heavy price when they're fuzzy about the future. Fuzzy is just a code word for let's get out of Dodge for the average millennial and I don't blame them. What is the reason that most leaders refuse to act in a transparent way? I think they're afraid of being thought of as less authoritative, less in charge, less powerful. They couldn't be more wrong. Being honest is like a millennial magnet. <laughs> Millennials are sensitive, and if you mock that, and you can if you like, but you'll never connect with them if you do. And sensitive people just want to know that you understand them, and the best way to do this is through sharing stories about your failures, or how you as a leader, you're overcoming your personal hardships. Listen, the digital age, all it means is they know all this stuff about you anyway. Why not talk about this with them and endear them to you and your story? The millennial workforce expects that leaders should be more human, less perfect, and at times a bit more vulnerable, regardless of hierarchy or rank. You want proof? 
There's a reason that people would rather see a video blog than read a blog. They want to see facial expressions, eye contact, body language. They want to see whether someone's being fake or genuine. People want leaders who know the balance between knowledge, the head, and wisdom, the heart. Newsflash, you cannot lead through an email, through blogging, through conference calls, Zoom, it's a real challenge and it beats the alternatives, but face-to-face -face communication is what creates the ripple of confidence that all workers crave in the workplace. Let me close with a short summary and tell you what happens when leaders are transparent. I have five powerful outcomes I'd like to emphasize with you. Outcome number one, if you do this, problems will be solved faster. Cut the crap. Don't put whipped cream on top of this. Just say it like it is. I guarantee your problems will be resolved more quickly because of the transparency that comes with an attitude of desperation and it's worth something. Rather than running away from you, they will run toward you. They will rise to the challenge. Solve problems quickly by being transparent with them. Outcome number two, teams will be built easier. Again, transparency is a powerful unifier here. If the leader of the team will share openly, well, what happens? I think if a team leader is willing to share openly, the likelihood that all the team members will do the same thing increases dramatically. Everyone will share their strengths and their weaknesses alike, and when that happens, people gifted in one area, in one area of the team, lead over here. This group will carry the ball and will lead over there. No one knows where to lead or who is gifted where or who is best suited for what until the leader steps up and demonstrates integrity through transparency. Now, everyone is following suit and teams are built easier. Outcome number three, relationships grow authentically. Relationships grow out of transparency. Ask Mark, how do you know this? Because it's the only way a relationship can grow. If a relationship is forced, then authenticity will be forged not in the fire of truth, but under the force of authority. Again, nobody wants to work under force, under rules, under threat of losing your job if you do fill in the blank or don't do fill in the blank. Isn't this especially true? Millennials wake up. They don't take well to force. It's also true of how we receive criticism. Millennials in the workplace say they want more feedback. What they probably mean in truth is that they want more positive feedback. Here's my experience talking with millennials again, but remember I hire only millennials. I can't begin to tell you how differently the millennial will work if he or she feels an authentic connection with the leader. When they feel the connection that comes through compliment over criticism, encouragement over condemnation, well, I can't imagine why any business leader would want to spend time criticizing without complimenting first. He must like hitting himself in the kneecaps with a hammer. Authenticity can be achieved when leaders take charge and lead workers into a growth relationship. When leaders care enough to lead this way, millennials will break down walls for that leader. Along those same lines, I love this fourth outcome of acting transparently. People will promote their leader. Again, a fourth outcome of transparency, people will promote you. When you act like a leader in the toughest times, you can be sure this will build trust and respect. People who like and trust you will promote you. They want to help you. In fact, it is so true that the millennial wants to help someone who's transparent and honest. The only problem is they often don't know how to help. The best leaders provide pictures of what a great team looks like and explains best where we fit into that picture. That is so true. And it leads me to conclude this teaching on transparency over tyranny, discussing the fifth outcome, performance jumps off the chart. Holy cow, is that true? Each of these points stand alone, but they build on each other. I hope you picked that up. In fact, let's reread that formula again. What were the five outcomes I just proposed? Efficient problem solving, plus the ability to build teams easier, plus the development of authentic relationships, plus trust equals a higher level of performance. It's that simple. So 
We've discussed two elements of what real leaders can do to help millennials achieve a better transition into your team. We talked about leading from a perspective of rationale over rules. We talked about leading from a position of transparency over tyranny. And the last element of how to lead millennials for the best possible outcome, you can lead from a position of sympathy over authority. Millennials are great people. Take advantage of that. They bring incredible skills to the table. They're social media savants for crying out loud. Take advantage of that. Now you may not like this, but it may be the key to your future success in business. Instead of complaining that millennials are always late to work, not engaged, they show no drive, maybe take some of that blame on your own shoulders and use it as a barometer of how you're doing as a leader. If you want the truth, and there's data that supports this, Actually, the older generation is better at showing engagement at work, but they're not actually better at the work. They're just better at faking it. I can admit that. No doubt. Millennials are more willing to speak out when they feel uninspired, disengaged, or dissatisfied. They will say, this place sucks, if it really does. But if given something that inspires them, they'll stick around and for a long time. They grew up in a world of instant potatoes, oatmeal, grits, and rice. But since they joined the workforce, they're learning that everything is not instant. Some are learning at a much slower pace than others. I would recommend a little extra sympathy from a business owner perspective on this one. Their struggle is real. The world they were raised in is vastly different than the one you and I were raised in. So the set it and forget it philosophy of set the bar, raise the bar, fire anybody that can't beat the bar is probably not going to work with this future generation of workers. Find something that does. Find sympathy, transparency, and a better rationale behind every rule, and you'll get a better following. My favorite business leader and author, Simon Sinek, offers some incredible insight in these final thoughts. He says, if you want an effective response in hiring and keeping millennials, then you must practice the following truths. Mentor and support them, number one. A true leader is never too busy to mentor. Number two, lead by example. Leaders look up to Hollywood movie stars, professional athletes. Well, maybe if you show your heroism, and leadership in their young lives, they may look up to you with the same enthusiasm and honor. Give them the opportunity to fail, number three. Listen, you screwed up a lot when you were young. Come on, you did. And someone forgave you. It was the soil of success for your growth into the business leader you are today. Mentor and support them, lead by example, give them the opportunity to fail, and number four, help them find themselves. They just lack confidence. I believe largely because they've lacked for role models, but you're there to give that to them. I've been guilty of criticizing more than complimenting them. I've been wrong in this, but I've corrected it. Number five, take a chance on them. They may surprise you. I've been surprised more often than not. Yeah, growing pains, I, I get it. I mean, it's kind of like having your kid come to work. For, can you imagine anything worse than your kid coming to work for you? Yeah, having someone else's kid come to work for you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love this generation. I have four daughters. They've embraced the culture, so I've conceded to the culture, and I've grown because of it. If you fight it, you'll end up disappointed in yourself, and you'll end up disappointing others with some coaching, some mentoring, some sympathy. Your next millennial hire could become your rock star. Help them develop into the leader you have become. You will not be sorry, I promise. I'll see you in our next episode, team.